Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In this video, I will demonstrate the latest geospatial features. Now there are two new features that are exposed as part of the geospatial components. The first one is a map component. The map component leverages Azure Maps. With the map component in Power Apps, now I can zoom in, zoom out, I can change the direction of my map, and at the same time I can also change the pitch of my map. You can dynamically provide a data source to the map component. In this scenario, I have a gallery that showcases office locations associated with my company. And as I pick the location in the gallery, note how it plots it on the map for me and also showcases the title of the office location. All of this data is coming from a very simple SharePoint list that I'm maintaining at the back end. It has the name of my office location, the address associated with it, and then I have also the latitude and longitude of the address associated. Now the beauty of the map component is you can either provide an actual address or you can provide latitude or longitude as the data set. Now in this scenario, data source is coming from the SharePoint list. And if I head over to the properties, the labels is the title property associated with my item at my in my data source and the address property is related to the address column associated with my data source. I could have also leveraged latitudes or longitudes. The second demo is around the address input component that can be used along with the map component. And the beauty of the address input component is that as you type an address, this will dynamically load all the relevant addresses across the globe that you can go ahead and pick. So it's a live address picker. And if I pick an address, as you can see that data is being passed over to my map component. Now the address input component, I'm leveraging the on change property to store data in a simple collection and that's what I'm plotting on my map. The address input component exposes a lot of properties that you can leverage based on the address that has been selected. Building number, country, country code, postal code, street name, street address, many, many details that you can directly leverage. The third scenario here is of the map control again. And in this case, I'm going ahead and plotting all my office locations on the map. Notice when there are multiple pins that are plotted that are close to each other, it will also automatically provide clustering for you. I can also go ahead and turn off clustering. And as I zoom in, notice how both the pins open up. The pins associated with the map can also have an on-click event associated with it. In this scenario, I have created a dialogue component in Power Apps. So as I select a pin, it will open up the dialogue component and will provide me relevant information associated with the pin that I have selected. So any office location that I select, it will open up a dialogue component and show me details about that specific office location. The next scenario that I will demonstrate is around the new GeoJSON feature associated with maps, wherein you can actually go ahead and draw polygons on your map. So here's my map component again. And this time what I can do is I can go ahead and draw polygons on my map. So I can use these different shapes and even free form shapes that I can start creating. And I can create these shapes and at the same time observe as I build these shapes, it gives me the GeoJSON, which is the feature collection format associated with my, my map as an output property that I can leverage directly. In line with the GeoJSON information, I can also have two maps wherein I can go ahead and plot polygon shapes on one map and actually save that information in a data source of choice. In this scenario, I'm just saving it in a collection and loading it in a second map, but I can easily use that information, leverage the JSON action in Power Apps and post it to my data source as a JSON attribute to store the GeoJSON information. In this scenario, my data is coming from my data source, which in this case is SQL. I have GeoJSON information loaded in SQL and that information is around the GeoJSON for specific states in the United States. So if I pick all, it will showcase all the states based on the GeoJSON information that I have stored in my data source. If I pick the specific states, it will just go ahead and highlight that specific state for me. The next demo is around the traffic and routing information. If you observe right here, I have my map and in this map, I have specific waypoints that I have highlighted as pins. Now what I can additionally do here is one, I can show incidents. This will actually plot live incidents right here. And if I click on a specific incident, it will give me more information about it. So right here, I have traffic jam for two minutes. Now, apart from the incident information, I can also plot the traffic flow type. So if I pick relative, this is going to go ahead and plot the relative traffic flow on the map. I can also go ahead and just showcase the relative delay only information. I can also show the route based on the waypoints that I have defined. 
Now I can go ahead and show the additional information or turn them off. I'm just showcasing the route information right now for these four waypoints. I also have an option to maintain my waypoint order. That means the order in which I provided the information as my data source. I'm going to go ahead and just follow that order. So I'm going from my favorite coffee shop to my favorite breakfast place to an appointment and then heading straight to work. I can also optimize the route by time or optimize the route by distance and decide whether or not I want to maintain the waypoint order or not. And the final demonstration is around what I'm calling a super map, wherein I'm trying to include all the different features of the address input component and the map input component together. So in this scenario, I can go ahead and plot addresses using the address input components. So I'm going to pick my office location right here. I'm going to call this waypoint office and I'm going to add this waypoint into my data source, which is a local collection and it plots that live on the map for me. I will go ahead and add two more waypoints. Okay, so I have plotted three waypoints now, home, office, and coffee, and these are my three waypoints. Now I can decide to maintain the order of my route right now, so I'm going from office to home and then to have coffee. I can change my waypoints because I've created this gallery where you can actually sort the items on the gallery. So if I move home right on the top, so it's now going from home to office, to coffee and this is when I'm maintaining the waypoint order. I can also optimize my route based on time or optimize my route based on distance. Can additionally show traffic information relative or just the delay and I can also see if there are any incidents that are going around right now. So these are all the new features that are coming soon to the geospatial components and power apps. Currently the geospatial components are available in private preview. Not all the features that I demonstrated as of now are available. In order for you to add the geospatial components, you need to do two things. First thing is you need to ensure that for your environment, you have the preview feature for geospatial services turned on. Second thing in your app, you need to ensure that if you go to advanced settings under experimental features, there is a feature called geospatial features that needs to be turned on. And then in order for you to add the map component or the address component, you can just go to the insert tab and search for map and add the new map component or search for the new address input component. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.